Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, or video at least, in which we're trying out the Red Liberty Bread and Roses demo for Hearts of Iron 4. Um, so thank you to those who have uh, brought and worked on this mod very much, but we talk about the Gilded Age. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. But we're led by a certain person called Norman Thomas, the last idealist. And we have Labor's Star Ascendant. Uh, the V stands for Victory. No Roar in 20s is nothing there. Hoover's Folly. And of course the appendix, so. For liberty, my friends, but we're led by some guy who's, you know, he's an idealist. And we're democratic socialists here. We have a city upon a hill. Not bad. And then we also have the Great Depression. We're all depressed, aren't we? But we'll begin with actually a lot of the focus you already done. Now this is only a demo. Kind of like, reminds me of like the beginning when TNO first came out. But, what are we going to start with? Helping out the Philippines, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Reorganization of politics or mandate. So start starts the Thomas administration. It's January 1st, 1936. Reach across the aisle. Looks like social democracy, unity above all else, preparing our agenda, an all-American crisis, because we do have the Great Depression. The smoldering embers push anti-lynching legislation. Um, so, but basically this mod is about Red Liberty, alternate history, world of Red Liberty. Be see the beginnings of the Second World War, explore lore and history from a world vastly different than our own, of course, and guide the U.S. through the darkest period in its history. So, there's six years of playable content for the United States, centered around Norman Thomas, functional elections uh, mechanic featuring both houses of Congress, and a flavor and whatnot, too. If we keep the world alive. So, take on the clan, huh? Unlock the bureau. Uh, expose their crimes. Uh, we have of, of agriculture. Buy up products or produce. Agricultural relief programs. Dealing with the Dust Bowl. Taking down their statues. Lee marches north. Of industry. Um, Federal People's Early Commission. Those darn banks. We're all started. Strengthen labor regulations. The Civilian Conservation Corps. Also, we have a couple copies here, too. Let's try this one. Paying for it all. Although taxes are extremely unpopular with the American people, they are the backbone of government power programs. It raises taxes on the wealth that we can ensure programs will be large and successful with this new found wealth or revenue. People can live happier, more fulfilling lives. I'll show the rich that we will not bow down to them as Democrats and Republicans have done before. So, we still don't have anything here. We're going to build up uh, our industry. How about that? Build up our industry as much as we can. Uh, why does Rhode Island have the best infrastructure in the entire game? I don't know. But I'm here for a good time. Oh, it's only set to 12. Also, I guess I didn't do any of this stuff either. Uh, let's start with the Navy, because a lot of the stuff is okay. Super, I love super heavy battleships. Probably too much. Level 2s are fine, but basic battle cruisers. I prefer light cruisers in all honesty. Um, this is this is workable. I can still work with this one. Uh, and all this other stuff I don't really bother with. So let's go with a... Oh, God. Well, I do want radar here, but that's actually not too bad in itself. Well, let's start with another carrier. Why not? You know what? Let's go just make all these ships, too. I apologize for not getting all this ready. I didn't realize that there was all this other stuff I forgot about doing. So, and this guy's already a good chunk of the way there. Those will be done soon. We're going to train our navy, but we have guns, a support equipment, and artillery. That's probably not good enough. Guns, uh, trains, artillery. Really? No, not even any. Oh, we have support equipment, artillery. We need trucks, and at least a very. Oh my God, there's so much here. Basic close air support and carrier. Oh God. Um, so we're not going to use carrier cast interwar. Close air support frame. Basic medium airframe. 18423. 18423. Max speed 318, 80%. Max speed for 16 weight, 24 thrust. Goodbye. Uh, what does this look like? What is this? Special features, special features. Medium bomb bay and or torpedo mounting. Oh, that's kind of cool. What does this one have? Just medium bomb bay. Um, for this one, small airframe. What does this one have? It's just a fighter, which is not bad. Uh, I like to stick to one at a time. Close air support, inner close air support. That's fine. Let's get some fighters. Fighters, cast. Uh, that one's not bad. I'll uh, get that one. And grab that one too. Now we'll need some light tanks. Oh, two different type of light tanks. Three types, I guess, technically. M282. There we go. We'll see what we can do. We have uh, 180 political power. Congress. Oh! We have Mr. Speaker, James Hudson Maurer. And then we have Vice President, uh, John Salas Reed. Uh, also known as Jack Reed. So. This is cool. Oh, America First and Democrats in the South. America First, America First. Republican Democrats in Indiana. Nebraska has a bunch of Republicans. But they're, oh, they're different color, huh? Us uh, Democrats and Socialists in New York. This is interesting. I don't know much about this, but it looks very promising. It looks very promising. America first, socialists in the Midwest, a lot of it is. Um, 
So there's anything, I guess there's not really much we can do about that, but okay. Uh, so we're disarmed. We're on undisturbed isolation, which is an issue. Aircraft design. Oh, we have no one for aircraft designers. Ooh. Costco's down. Ernest King. Construction is. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, General Electric Standard Oil doesn't really give us any benefits. Daily Army XP plus, plus 0.01. That's not bad. Springfield, Rock Island, Army Ordnance. Um, I kind of want to go with the Army Ordnance, but is there any way we get more political power, maybe? Uh, Benjamin Summer Wells. We've got Nearing. More political power. Less consumer construction speed, though, which I don't like. This is not bad. Po oh, what's that? Poverty rate monthly change. Is this TNO now? That's not bad. I like it a lot. Uh, of course, John Dewey. Are they different for every single... Oh, no. So, so they're all the same one. So we have Jack Reed here helping us out. We have Mel and Craig here as well. More daily army XP. I would, like, I would really like more army XP. But in the meantime... Uh, I don't hurt construction speed by 5%. But this is really not bad. Oh, I guess we'll try this guy. See what he's like, maybe? Oh, oh do we have even more consumer goods? Um, here, build in the Midwest. Not because I'm from there, but just because I'm from there. Uh, New England? Ish? Area? Sure, why not? Turmoil in Brazil. Okay, the Amazon road flows red. I just might as well build as many roads as possible. Uh, Afghanistan's gone and plody. Uh, let's continue building up all these roads and let's kind of look at the world and read more focuses too, I guess. Oh, how much political power do we get? Oh, 1.8. Okay, so what do we have here? The Brazilians of war. Invalid blockade. Oh, we can some. Oh my god! Military observers. Congress. Oh, the Hill has been has his own rules and ideas. We'll have to work with them to make things happen, but there are ways to ensure that we have sympathetic and supportive Congress to work with. Uh, three representatives support the communists, 189 support the socialists, 79 3% Republicans, 177 represent the Democrats, 41 from America first, total representatives, 483. Photo gives us plus 0.19 political power every day. Senate. 20 support us, 23 support the Republicans, 38 with the Democrats, and 7 with America first. Ah. And now we have to manage... Oh, we have to manage the party, too. There's no word more terrifying to a man on the left than the dreaded factionalism. Unfortunately for the Socialist Party of America, there exists not one but three distinct factions, each vying for control of the party. Maintaining the unity of the party is the utmost importance, allowing divisions to grow out of control could result in disastrous electoral consequences. The Revolutionary Policy Committee seeks to transform the party into a Revolutionary Socialist Commission, or organization. Uniting radical socialists, socialist labor rights, and few of the communists that stuck with the party through the 20s, they are willing to stick to electoralism only so long as it ensures results. Their relevant approval is high. The Eastern Congress is a grouping of intellectual socialists led by Norman Thomas. The faction desires to make a broad appeal to the American middle class, believing that the working, the working class will then follow. Highly influential and very high approval. The Western Caucus favors reformism rather than revolution, to emphasizing social theory and revolutionary rhetoric in favor of honest government and efforts to improve public health. Moderately influential and uh, is high, and overall the Socialist Party is showing signs of division. Socialists grow more united. Uh, expand the party paper. The committee grows more influential. Uh, stand against imperialism. Meet with the National Executive Committee. Promote law and order. Increase progressive influence. Maintain social spending. I feel like we could just burn through all that as fast as we possibly probably could. Um, so with this, that's not bad. I want more political power, but that's not going to really help us that much. In all honesty, more stability would be better. Is that it for the decisions? We have three things here in the Brazilian Civil War, which I guess we should probably interfere with. Mm, but better consumer goods, though. But stuff down here, too. Standard oil. Better gun production. It's not bad. But you know what? Let's do something down here. Let's choose military formations. Oh. Let's choose that one. Okay, so United, United States of Brazil. The uh, Brazilian Civil War, as well as the right-wing coalition. And then we have these guys, uh, Luis Carlos Perestes, and left-wing coalition. Well, we can send one. Who do we actually want to send to Brazil? Because you guys are 16 combat, which is not terrible, but honestly, light armored recon. I don't know if I would ever use that. Just be told. I don't want to send tanks down there. So, honestly, it might be best to send these guys down there. The Marines. They're only 8 combat width, but... I don't know. I'll send the Marines. Why not? Uh, do we have any planes? That's a good question. Ask? No. Well, we have a few fighters. Let's deploy them. And, of course, quick deploy. Fighters. Cast. Tactical bombers. Bing, bong, boom. There we go. National Liberal. Uh, so we can send one group. Um... Not sure what it's like around there. Let's go with tactical bombers, just because the range at which you need to tactically bomb is going to be massive. A class two elections. Oh boy. 
Election season once again extended on America, and cities big and small, party headquarters are opening up, and posters are being plastered on every open surface. Speeches are given, the donations, big and small, are being solicited. The, United, the grand United States tradition of beer, brawls, and ballots is underway, and whatever result it produces, no matter how maddening, will be accepted as legitimate as benefits the greatest republic in the history of the world. I'm not bombing anybody. Vote Democrat. It is an election year. The congressional elections will be held. President elections will also be held this year. You have nothing to lose but your chains. Vote Socialist. I guess we'll vote Socialist. Uh, is there anything here in terms of voting? What, what are these other ones? The Europe of Flame. A Day of Infamy. Down Mexico Way. Oh, that's cool. Getting involved in Mexico. A reform in the military. Oh, we have to wait for the elections to be over. Okay, well, we cut the military budget. Federal project number one. That looks like a good idea. Strengthening the executive. Take down the statues. Race for legacy. Arrest the leaders. Well, let's do federal project number one. According to our Commerce Secretary, Harry Hopkin, who, they got E2. In times of the need of the artists, no less than the manual workers, entitled to gainful employment. The arts, no less than business, agriculture, and labor are and should be the immediate concern of the ideal Commonwealth. This then will create a series of projects operating without discrimination regarding race, color, or creed for the employment of artists, musicians, art actors, and writers. Oh, thank you. All right, well, let's see what we've got here. Justin Baker, Marion Robert Morrison. Morrison, yes. Well, we're bombing. The Red Apple. Thomas ascended his platform in front of a massive crowd, 10,000 people at least. A deafening roar of approval washed over him as he stepped into the side of the crowd. Taking a moment to shake hands with a fellow Socialist Party member and mayor of the city, Fiora de la Guardia, he then stepped forward in front of the microphone. Working men and women of New York City and state, it's an honor to stand before you today. Another wave of applause and cheers watched over him. I stand today amidst the Red Metropol Metropolis. New York City, under the leadership of LaGuardia and with the aid of countless socialist inhabitants, has excised corruption from the city council, has cast down the petty oligarchs of Tammany Hall, has dragged the bell gangsters to prison, and has built the vast public works that are the envy of even such cities as London, Paris, and Berlin. New York is a shining beacon to the nation and the world. A beacon of socialist promises is made and fulfilled to the greatest extent. New York is the city of the future. He pauses, applause once again grew deafening. It was mostly theater. New York City itself was a clinch. Uh, for the Socialist Party and have been since the 20s. There wasn't much proper campaign to be done here, so it felt quite good to stand before tens of thousands of people and make a small little victory lap. A smile to himself, continue his speech. A municipal revolution. Redistribution of Accumulated Wealth Act. Oh. We'll have to pass a bill to gain the following effects. Uh, well, um, with total representatives, we have us. Can we... Uh, I don't know, but there's no important legislation. I don't know. Let's say first, maybe. Um, we probably actually probably want to make more divisions, too, in the end. Because that'll be okay with us. So, so this model was created by a very small team of an average of average of four active people at a time. So, yeah. okay, well, all right, awesome. That's a lot of work they probably put in. Let's see. So, uh, Congress currently considering the, the act, current support of the 234 representatives and 38 out of 48 senators. Huh. Extend the session. In the case of a narrow vote margin, we may consider extending the legislative session by a few days, giving us a bit more time to negotiate with Congress. However, I don't know the heck out of them, so we'll have to be strategic when we do it. So, negotiate with the Republicans. So, the bill is being debated. This is how many. The business is being debated. Okay. That's not enough. Oh, we're here too. And so, if it fails, well, we have to redo this probably. But so. Craig. And we'll go with Mosley. You're kind of more of an attacker. Oh, I, don't, I like artillery, but we'll go with you. What do you have here? Not much. All right, then. La Rock seizes power. Okay. Can you help out there? Yeah. That's getting attacked as well. All right. Republicans. Republicans. Some military observers. Well, let's close out of that one for now so we don't have to see that. Oh. Oh, crap. We have to solve the vote election season, too? Election for class for senators coming up. Following states have these following senators. Oh. We should probably do this, too, then. Um, Democratic campaign. Well, shnikes. Um, among the many old towns in wild forests, the voters in New England tend to be very diverse electorally. Many areas remain Republican strongholds, such as Maine and Vermont, while Massachusetts and Rhode Island tend towards either Democratic or Socialist parties. Most urban centers in New England are friendly towards the Socialist Party, but many of the surrounding areas and bourgeois areas come out against the Socialists in huge numbers. East Coast, Upper South, there's a lot of places. So, show the Socialists leaning over the Democrats by a significant margin. Great Plains. Um, we don't want Southwest, maybe the Upper South. We could try the Upper South. Um, because this one looks really good, Upper South. 
We'll try that first. We could. Uh, it's all high right now, so it's good. And. So we need more people in the House. Negotiate with the Democrats. Negotiate with them. Uh, Republicans? Are you kidding me? We need one more then. That. Death in San Juan on the 23rd of February. The American appointed Puerto Rican uh, chief of police, Colonel Francis Irregs, was shot three times in the head by assassin Elias Bochamp. The medical examiner stated that he died instantly. Bochamp was assisted by a co-conspirator and fellow Puerto Rican nationalist, Hernan Rosado. Both men were apprehended and executed after allegedly trying to escape. Uh, this is worrying considering the events of the past few years. Tensions are high between those who wish to see Puerto Rico gain its independence and supporters of statehood. Many of the island remember Albizu Campos' words, like he said them yesterday. Those that calling for cooperation with the U.S. government were submitting to the brainwashing of Norman Thomas and the SBA. Some say that those are the words that led to the horrific Rio Pedras massacre, but those that see them as truth are growing in numbers now. Worrying. There's this division. Oh, well, that's kind of different. 18, kind of come with uh, smoke bed. I'd rather train these and then just add on more support companies. Oh, actually, you know what? You already have two support companies. You have only. You have two as well. You know what? That makes it easier just to train these guys. Uh, there you go. Cavalry divisions, yeah, we're gonna have to edit those. Garrison divisions, we'll use that for garrisons for now. Um, ah, where you are? Good. Civilian oversight? No. Local autonomy. That's better. So, that's not good. The bill is being debated. I may have to redo this. Ideal Commonwealth, a bunch of art artists completing a job thanks to federal funding. Another success story for the 1829. Terrible opposition campaign. What could have they meant by that? Uh, we need more political power then. Uh, get the military budget. In recent years, U.S. military has been horrifically bloated and overfunded. We spent on the armies as if we were actively uh, in a second civil war. We need to jingoistic funding in the military in order to help the average man. The American worker gains much more from food security and solidarity with minority workers compared to the 20 new warships. Not to mention, without these cuts, we would be drowning in debt. Base strike, huh? Cool. Well, we'll do more of the stuff for that Federal Aid Commission. Uh, there's nothing there, and I guess we'll probably unleash the Bureau? The Bureau holds <clears throat> vast potential power, but we must be cautious when using it. We don't want to become like the like of the Leninists in Russia, using state power to oppress political uh, opponents willy-nilly. Our party and voters would never stand for, and we ourselves are about such things. That said, there's some targets. There's some targets who would gladly stick the Bureau on that no one will care about if we if, uh, will raise an eyebrow over them. For the Kingmen Unite. President Thomas walked up on stage. He looked over the crowd and hesitated. It seemed to be one of the largest crowds he'd ever spoken to, easily numbering in the thousands. He began to sweat. He'd always been an author first, not a public speaker. Still, those were mostly striking workers and SBA voters. They should go smoothly, he thought. Good afternoon, Flint, Michigan. Thomas said cheerfully in the microphone. The crowd roared. I hear you boys are doing a mighty fine job of organizing. Been on strike for three weeks. Good on you, man. Good on you. He chuckled slightly. I read an interview in the paper last week with Alfred Sloan. The big boss here, GM. He gave the crowd time to jeer his name. He seemed awfully nervous about the strike. I think you all have got him on the run. The crowd cheered and hollered more, waving their signs. On the written all sorts of slogans, quotes from Marx, insults of Mr. Sloan and local management. There were large banners colored black and red with SBA and IWW symbols emblazoned on them. As President Thomas looked over the cheering crowd full of workers with both their fists and voices raised, he was proud. This is what he wanted America to look like. Thousands of working people united in their knowledge of their own interests and needs. As he drifted off into thought, he realized he had been silent for some time and the cheering was dying down. You know, Alfred Sloan mentioned me in the interview with the Times, he said. Forming a sly smile, he said all those anarchist worker agitations followed those socialists in office. The crowd began to boo. Well, now wait, folks. The president spoke over them. He gave me the best compliment I've ever received in all my time in office. He said because of the labor laws put forward by that communist Norman Thomas, my hands are tied and I can't do anything to stop the strike. The president laughed, and if that ain't a reason to be proud of what we do, we do in the SBA, and nothing is. <clears throat> The crowd went wild, cheering so loudly that Thomas almost felt pushed back by the sheer volume as he looked over the faces of all the uncountable number of striking workers. He knew that Alfred Sloan was right to be afraid, because these workers were the finest that American labor had to offer, and as he looked on with pride, the channel was picked up by the crowd, and the Thomas wiped a cheerful tear from his eye. SBA, SBA, SBA. Cool. As we are doing this, the war still down here, and we are still passing, but I did uh, negotiate with the Democrats now instead of the Republicans, so. House discussions, if not selected, if the bill move on its own, when selected, move. Oh. When selected, you get 10 more political power, which we could use, probably. So the bill's passed in the House. But we need 10 more uh, senators. We could work with the Democrats. Um, it's kind of hard to see, like, where uh, all the votes are. 
Because obviously we have elections coming up, and we're still doing the campaign and whatnot, right? So that's where we're at. Um, actually, we might want to do the Rockies next. That might be really good. Uh, but it's hard to see because you should say like three, three out of three comments represented supporting the bill. 189 out of so many are supporting the bill. Because I don't, I don't know where. To, well, I guess we look here, like we saw earlier, but it's hard to tell. It just makes it easier if we just had like a, a GUI or at least more numbers here to see like where, where's, where's everyone at for this. You know. Got the military budget, like we said right earlier, and Federal Aid Commission. Yeah. You know, let's save again just in case, because I want to make sure whatever we do in this demo, we do well at it. And whenever we, you know, play Pueblo in general. Um, so we need 10 more senators. So I don't know how many more senators we have here. The AFP? Negotiate with the socialists. We, we are socialists. We need four more of the new world wall. I don't know if we have enough political power here, god dang it. Uh, Jimmy Sears strode on the top of his creation. Well, it wasn't exactly his creation, but the project he was employed to work on for the last five years had a special place in his heart. A project which gave him work, shelter for his family, and a wages to put food on the table was none other than the Boulder Dam. A massive project spearheaded by the American government to tame the Colorado River, which would provide power and water for the dozens of citizens living in Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and beyond. Walking behind, behind him walked his family of three who had moved to Colorado to find work. Alongside them were many other workers' families who also worked on the dam. Many of his fellow workers, including Jimmy himself, had lost their jobs from the Depression, and without the intervention from the government of Washington, they would almost likely be unemployed and many homeless. The benevolence from the state towards Jimmy and his fellow proletariat allowed his fellow workers to regain their dignity thanks to the social economic policies, which allowed the workers to rebuild this great marvel of American engineering. Jimmy then walked to the edge of the new construction to marvel at the engineering feat, which he, had continued, he contributed towards. The sweat and tears of his labor were laid before him. 700 feet and counting below him was the Great Boulder Dam, holding back the rush of the Colorado River. Jimmy's heart swelled with pride from just looking at his work. The dam took the lowliest of the American workers from the feet and once more put the workers back on their feet. Jimmy was grateful towards the dam which gave him work. His family also gave him undying support and respect to the Socialist Party of America, for without their support he would never found work. Now the dam stood as a monument not towards old America, but uh, Jimmy had realized, but to the hope of a new age for Jimmy and his fellow workers. God bless America. Mm. We probably need to add a couple more days. Now, if we can get a four Republicans, we'd be okay, but how do we get more political power faster? Decent opposition campaign? Um, you know what? Honestly, I don't think we can do this. Do we get political... Wait, do we not get political power from... We don't. Oh, crap. I should not have done that. Oh, well. Uh, good campaign. Today's address was well received by our gathering supporters, and a candidate spoke with the compassion and knowledge which clearly resonated with the audience. Reporters will present... Uh, wrote later about the fine way our candidates presented himself at the party, and we can build part of this fine step in our campaign. Yeah, we'll get this one too. Because we still need to keep campaigning too, so. Uh, the Rockies? The Great Pittsburgh Flood. Uh, Pittsburgh is drowning due to unseasonably hot weather. The frozen rivers of Pennsylvania began to melt. Normal this would make it mo take months, but due to the warm spell, it melted within days. The of water rushed down Pittsburgh's famous three rivers. The water came so fast that no warning could be sent out. In some areas, water surged up to 45 feet. This flooded the entirety of Pittsburgh with about 20 feet of water for days. 45%, of Pittsburgh's downtown was flooded beyond repair. The entire power grid has been knocked out and misinformation spread quickly. Some doctors predict a typical epidemic is upcoming for Pennsylvania and Ohio. The steel mills that employ 10% of the local population have been wiped out in the history of America. We've never seen destruction on the scale. It's gone so out of hand that first responders cannot estimate total fatalities due to the vast majority of Pittsburgh being in inaccessible. It seems. Others uh, will set Pittsburgh behind the other steel belt cities economically for decades. We can be sure that eventually Pittsburgh will retain its status as the capital of American industry. For now, America, though, must help Pittsburgh back on its feet. Absolutely awful, and the graves of wrath. The president looked across the camp. The people watching him were thin as twig, uh, twigs and seemed to be lacking all spirit. The way Labor Secretary Perkins explained it to him did not show the reality of the situation at all. She said that in California there was a plus of migrant workers and a shortage of jobs, so wages were low and conditions were bad. Her breathing did not repair Thomas to see the absolute destitution and misery that this migrant work camp displayed. Dozens of eyes were upon him as he stood in front of a small crowd. So where are you all from, Thomas asked, for us an awkward smile. I'm from Oklahoma, said one woman in the crowd, who came here for work and there ain't none. Thomas was taken aback by the bluntness of her words. No one had spoken to him like that before. Well, there's a government camp just a few miles north here that's part of the Recovery Act. They can give you work and see, it, see your needs as you wish. That's where I came from, yelled a man from the back of the crowd. They ain't got the money to pay us or food to feed us. It looks like we're here, just accept the copper harass. Uh, yeah, when he can try to get in. Thomas looked at it on in shock. The police are opposing the recovery, he asked incredulously. A few people in the crowd laughed at his, dis dis at his disbelief. Of course they are, said teenage boy. All the coppers around here are crooked. The plan is paying more than the state does. All they do is harass them and wave guns at anyone who tries to organize. Just two days back, they shot my brother for striking. A young girl cried, killing him dead. Thomas looked at one of his aides. It's much worse here than I thought. We should go. He gave a brief farewell to the crowd and turned to walk away. As he did, however, the moment pushed his way past his bodyguards and grabbed him by the arm. Mr. President, sir, she pleaded to him. It's so much worse here than I look. 
Then it looks. I fed a grown man here with my own breast milk because he didn't starve to death otherwise. Uh, we want to recover, sir, so badly, but we ain't getting one here. She let go of his arm as tears began to flow from her eyes. Norman opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. After a few moments, she turned and walked back to the crowd, haunting. So I guess you would maybe work with the APF or both of these, but you don't get enough power, so... Uh, we might be able to do this one, maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. And if we don't pass it, I'll find another way to pass it. Russia and Broad in seconds of war. A day for labor. There's one day every year with a reaction. There's the royal despise of the passion. Hey, my political power. The one day in which the masses routinely come together as one, make the world trump before the combined power. May Day, the day of the workers. Around the world in Seattle, Chicago, New York, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, London, Madrid, Paris, Berlin, Warsaw, Moscow, Tokyo, the workers fell forth from their apartments, slums, and factories that fill the street with flowing parades. Red and black banners fluttering in, as the air uh, is filled with the international, the commonwealth the toil, and the workers of Marseille. Marseille. Uh, the force of reaction capital cower in the gilded halls of crime and wait out the storm that's the day of the working classes. Arise, ye wretched of the earth. Cool. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that's still not enough. Are you kidding me? Bruh. Well, we have to go back and see if we can actually pass that. That's actually really good, too. Um, Federal aid commission would be good at digging down in a poverty. The Social Security Act. Add American safety net, bare bones. Less political power, but that'll help us out overall. Who ever believed that our generation would live to see the day that poverty was abolished? He was wrong. We cannot end poverty with a mere fleck of a pen. We need dedication and hard work. Poverty is not ended and may well never be ended. But we have massively improved the standard of living for the vast majority of our citizens. We have some hiccups along the way, but our policies are still extremely popular and quite successful. We can help our future policies will do, so, do well in reorganization. We can't structure the government is disagreeable to purposes. All but the most radical of us consider ourselves patriots, of course, and so while we're friendly to the broader strokes of the federal government's design, we find that certain parts of it could be greatly improved. Some of these improvements must be administered to areas of our own creation, such as the countless different agencies we set up to help America recover from the Great Depression, and some need to be applied to other areas. An inevitable party. You're tiring. Thomas's eyes looked the other man up and down, silently appraising his vice president, and leaning on the dark circles under the man's eyes. Jack had been a friend and more than that an ally for years. He helped keep the peace with the more radical members of the party, keeping everyone on the same team. Yeah, Reed Kopp, I don't want to go, of course, but I don't feel like I have much choice. Darn Typhus. I spent too long in me in, me in Russia, and now no doctor in this whole darn country can get it out of me. The circles under his eyes seemed to grow dark as he slumped back into his chair. I'm so sorry, Norman, I have to do this. I can't keep up with this anymore. I'm too old for this. The vice president stared down at the floor, and Norman could swear he saw the tears glistening in his eyes. We're the old guard, Norman. We're the only ones who remember the good old days, back when Eugene and Bill were still here. It's an exaggeration, but not much of one. A lot of the new party members have been sucking their thumbs when Debs was president. President Thomas sighed, his own eyes directed down at the desk. He suddenly felt empty and cold. Old. I'll be old with you until the end of this term. We'll have a primary in the party uh, to find my successor. Thomas nodded. Tom, promise me you'll finish your job. No half measures like Labor did in Britain. We can't sell out now. We're so close to the end. We can break uh, capitals back if we win the next election. We just need one more push. Promise me you won't sell out. Reed has always been more radical than Thomas. Their friendship had even gone off to a rocky start when Thomas had been informed of Reed's adventure in Russia and his subsequent flirtation with Leninism, saying nothing of his unabashed Marxism. He said nothing, merely stared down at his desk and nodded, I promise. So, at this point, I've just stopped trying to do this one. Redistribution of accumulated wealth act, we just don't have the, the numbers. So, maybe with this election, if we do really well, we'll have the numbers. So, I'm going to start stockpiling political power at this point. Yeah, there's no point. Just We just got to start stockpiling stuff. This 1936 Socialist Party Convention. The Socialist Party of America stands at a crossroads this year with two potential vice presidential candidates leading two radically different platforms or directions. Should their fellow comrades elect them to assist the president as a second in command? The nominees at the forefront are running are the following Henry Wallace, <clears throat> the Secretary of Agriculture. Under the current presidency, Wallace seeks large scale agricultural reforms and conciliatory policies with the Russian Communists in Moscow, of course. Oh, we're not doing anything bad here. Um, the Secretary is far more popular among the base of the party, which is made up of moderates who seek slow but steady change in the right direction. Earl Browder is spurred on by the belief that the leaders of both the Democratic and Republican parties are possible fascist dictators in the making. Seeks to establish unity and work alongside socialists and moderates within the party in order to achieve greater and more radical change within the U.S. and ensure no dictatorship can occur. He is not opposed to making concessions to secure unity, but many within the party circles consider him a dangerous man. Which these two socialist party Americas uh, will choose to take the most, second most powerful position in the United States will largely determine the next five, few days. I have a choice to make considering the possibility of one of these men becoming president themselves one day. Clearly, Wall is superior choice. Jack Reed will be replaced by Henry Wallace. Let's get louder with Browder. Oh god, so he's probably more of the communist flavor. Western Caucus is high, high, very high. Um, I kind of want me to do Western Caucus, maybe? I don't know. How hard do we want to push socialism or social, democratic socialism or whatever we have here? Hmm. Because it gives them more influence if we do that. Um, honest government efforts. Uh, we can go radical. Maybe I'll go with Wallace. I'll try Wallace. Oh, so, starting to show signs of division. Well, that's not good. You know what? We can spend this once. A, 
poverty we just finished. Get some machine tools. Uh, reorganization we read earlier, so we'll do that one. And disperse industry. You know what? You hold. I want you to go. I want you to hold. Good campaign. Good, good, good. And I'm spending a little more political power doing what? The Rockies? I really was focused on the Rockies. The Southwest? We could probably do okay with the Southwest as well. So we're really spending political power like crazy. 1936 Republican National Convention. Republicans who support the party or the Democrats nationally. Is it a TNO reference? The, the Republicans support the Democrats. A coalition that can keep it. Bruh. The mod is self alive. Now we're doing okay. Huh? There's a lot of divisions up here, which is kind of worrying, but whatever. Come on, move a little faster. 1936 Democratic Coalition. Well, this year is Democratic Convention's packed as usual. God dang it, where, where are our allies here? Like, why are we trying to do everything here that we possibly can? With no help. Like, bruh. <clears throat> with various political factions, of course, namely from the antebellum south, the more northern progressive wing, who have just been juxtaposed to the staunch borderline socialist policy of the Socialist Party of America that has continued to squeeze out the previously held Republican strongholds, showing themselves as an open towards federal programs, yet rearing in when it comes to the taxation of business, and a complete desegregation of the armed forces of, or of repealing Jim Crow laws, which Joseph Lister Hill, although a southerner aligning himself with this faction of the Democratic Party the most, yet with his own quirks with regards to states' rights, namely for blacks. <clears throat> Born in Montgomery, Alabama, Lister had his path towards the shape of medical policy by his own father, a surgeon who inspired the works of Dr. Joseph Lister, named his son after him, which is astoundingly accomplished within the Senate, passing Conference of Healthcare, pushing for the Bill Hurton Act, which even progressives outside of his own party supported open heartedly, showing his skills of playing both sides of the Democratic Party and even members outside of it within the Senate. Although seemingly borderline progressive with regards to federal reach in the case of healthcare and education, his views on segregation within the armed forces with him having served in the military himself remains controversial, although propping his image for the more white Protestants who deem the encroachment of undesirables in their neighborhoods with the passing of the progressive legislation as costing jobs in the area. Whether controversial to one side or the other, let's use a perfect liberal moderate figurehead to spearhead through a democratic agenda through an America that doesn't seem to have fallen so far off its commitments to the First Amendment and the Constitution while championing policies for the working man. Progressive so long as you're European skinned. Can we send any more volunteers? We need to send more volunteers. We're about to get in circle here. God dang it. Come on. Fourth of July. Good opposition campaign. Citizens of the United States, President Thomas, addressed the assembled masses, tens of thousands strong, <clears throat> who stand here today among the achievements of our forefathers. He swept his arm around and gestured to the White House, the Congress building, the Lincoln Memorial, and this is the day we celebrate their choice, the choice that set America's course towards its God-given destiny of prosperity and greatness, the choice of independence, and the choice of revolution. The crowd roared in approval, and Thomas was waited patiently for them all to fall silent again. And did I tell you this? The American Revolution isn't over. It was never over. There are our revolutions eternal, and our Holy Father smiles up at us, <clears throat> or upon us, as it is progresses. Uh, God's grace is with us as we bring liberty and civilization to the world. The founders, John Brown, uh, Abraham Lincoln, the feminists, all were doing God's divine will and spreading the holy light of freedom further. And a revolution shall continue unabated so that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. <clears throat> as Thomas finished the most fiery sermon given yet, the gathered thousands once again roared, thunderous applause spilling over the president as fireworks began exploding in the sky above. Truly no country could ever be as great as the U.S. by rockets or a glare. <clears throat> continue on efficiency. Unless you bureau. Uh, the Bureau holds vast potential power, but we must be cautious when using it. We're not become the lack of Leninists and Russia using state power to oppress political opponents willy-nilly. Bargaining voters can never stand for, and we are so such about such things like I read earlier. That said, there are some targets we would gladly stick to the Bureau on so that we no longer raise an eyebrow after. Social Security Act. This is stupid. Why? Why do we have to do it like this? We have to fight through all these people. Um, and the AI doesn't even take care of itself, which sucks. Dealing with a bloat. President Thomas looked. Oh, that's not good. Uh, looked at the simple papers. <clears throat> piles upon piles of documents, graphs, charts, papers. All right, what's all this? He looked up to the Vice President Reed. Bureaucracy, Mr. President. Jack Bush a set of papers to the front of the desk for Thomas to see. National Economic Recovery Council, Federal Aid Commission, National Financial Aid Bill, our board, Federal Recovery Commission, and Federal People's Recovery Commission, along many, many more. Frankly, there are too many agencies, some which are entirely redundant. We're wasting money, according to the conservatives. Personally, I don't see too much of an issue. We're, we're providing jobs to people who otherwise might be unemployed. But governmental blow is an easy to turn into a campaign issue, so this could be a liability. Oh, God, no. Sometimes it pays to have a journalist as advice. All right, so you suggest we consolidate them? Yes, Mr. President, and quick, before campaign season ramps up and looks like we're covering our butts. Make it so. East Coast might not be bad, too. East Coast, Rockies. Uh, let's go with East Coast now. Where are our guys? Like, bro, you left this completely open. Straits crisis, huh? Like, we have to stop them from doing all this, but still. Hopefully do well. Unless your bureau, strengthen the executive. 
<clears throat> pack the court. Accept the rulings. Take down their statues. Well, oh, what's this one? The second Bill of Rights? Oh. Let's do all these first. Um, arrest their leaders. Now that the crimes have been made public, it's time to publicly arrest the leaders of the clan. No applied agreements or house arrest, so these vile men will go straight to jail on the back of a paddy wagon and save them to the trials. Show the American people that not even the most influential can escape the all seeing eye of the law. Cool. Uh, what was up to? Thank God. At least we're back here now. An unwelcome surprise. Joe Willer has been called many things a patriot, hero, son of. The South, they've been called a lazy do-nothing, and father an a-hole by his wife, although that was one that was used more affectionately. Never in his life experience to be called a murderer, he would never been allowed, not by the politics, not by a jury, not by his murder. Regardless, neighbors, regardless of what he may or may not have done. <clears throat> uh, which is why he felt his heart drop on his stomach when he opened his door to find two men in clean, neat suits on his doorstep with a black sedan parked on the white dirt row behind him. One of them, a negro, stepped forward and smiled, offering his hand. Joe didn't take it. Who are you and what do you want? The two men looked at each other and the other a white stepped forward. I'm Agent Farrow, this is Agent Franklin. We work for the Bureau of Investigation, and we're considering uh, an investigation of the murder in the area. I ain't heard of no murder, Joe leaned against the door frame, scowling. Agent Franklin retrieved a notebook from his pocket and opened it, scribbling down something before flipping back a few pages to start reading. Six days ago, a colored man, local colored man, Leon uh, Forger, was found hanged from a tree in his backyard. His house had been broken into, and there were signs of a struggle. The local police declined to investigate, so due to Section 4 of the Terrorism Suppression Act, the case falls into federal jurisdiction. Would you come with us, please? We have some questions for you. Four weeks later, Joe Willers would find himself in an integrated federal courtroom, charged with breaking, entering, assault, and murder. Guilty in all charges. Uh, let's see. Rockies are still good to do, too, though. What else do we have around here? Global conflicts. Simulation observers, but doesn't really help us in trucks. So. Managing the party. Showing sense of division. I don't want to spend too much more. Go some influential. Uh, they're all high for now. Eastern Caucus. Uh, yeah. Investigate the AFP. The American First Party has been longer than the bastion of anti American and white supremacist ideals. This party and the foundation on which it's built must be eroded for the safety of the American people. Another good plan. It's looking pretty good, though. Looking pretty decent. Get the elections first. Uh, community efficiency, good campaign, nice. Raid the headquarters. Glenn has been far from subtle organization with regular large rallies involving cross burnings and lynchings. It seems that it should be easy to find that HQ. If only. The issue is that the various chapters of the clan are still around like supercells. So every time a clan leader gets busted, he can't give up who his, his superiors are. However, the intensive infiltration by police and bureau agents, we found what could possibly be the headquarters of the clan. If we go through what, this, we won't win any popularity contest, but we can deal a fatal blow to the clan. The Rockies are not bad to do again. Oh, Southwest is still pretty good. Southwest or East Coast? East, or, you know, Southwest or Rockies. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, since we've been using the Marines a whole bunch, I want some artillery on these bad boys. Do we have any already? We have no already. Okay, that's not good. Make them all thicker. Thicker and stronger. We like them like that way. A Rhode Island newspaper article, huh? Uh, Marines, thank you very much. Oh, not scared to notice of those who have been corresponding with me that for much of my life. I've been held certain ideas about class, race, and culture that some would some consider backwards. I can better understand the inherent or inert blindness and defiant ignorance of the reactionaries from having been one of them. I know how uh, smugly ignorant I was. Oh, be an uprising. Look at that. Wrapped up in the arts, the uh, natural, not social sciences, the externals of history and antiquarianism, the abstract academic phases of philosophy, and so on, all the one standard, standard lore to which, according to the traditions of the dying order, liberal education was limited. God, the things that were left out. The inside facts of history, the rational interpretation of periodic social crises, the foundations of economics and sociology, and the actual state of the world today, and above all, the habit of applying disinterested reason to problems hitherto approached only to the traditional genuflections, flag waving and callous shoulders that are out, shrugs. I write and sit now a changed man. While I once sneered at liberals for a while, I saw as degeneracy and blind opportunity and optimism, and so the socialist full of destruction of the elite who I believe draws society onwards, I do so no longer. I cannot speak to the uh, entire nation, but I can speak to my friends and correspondence community. I hereby endorse Norman Thomas for the presidency of the United States of America. In his campaign, lies the only hope for a great nation to save us from the reaction of the Marxist. If the, the many vile words I've written on the subject of race and class and religion mean anything to you, perhaps then these words will mean something to you, too. Howard Philip Lovecraft. Thanks, Mr. Cat Lover. Thanks, we appreciate it. Uh, still an opposition campaign, no, that's not good. 
still working on that. Mechanical Phoenix, not bad. He's still in 1936. Uh, I like him a better Marine, but that's alright for now. Uh, we're looking not too bad. I guess we can do that one too, because why not? And. The September Constitution. Alright, well, what the heck is going on in. Oh, why? Wow. Like, I, I did say earlier really, I wanted to check out what all this was, but. Social Democracy Ramsey McDonald. Ramshackle Mac. The French Republic. De La Roque. I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I, oh. The Continental Entente. Commonwealth. The Warsaw Pact. That is weird. With Poland and Germany united. With Ukraine and Belarus. That is odd. Well, I like there's a lot of divisions. The Commonwealth, of course, is normal. We've got Iran. Afghanistan's killing itself, but, you know. Does anyone really care? Not too much. Uh, Empire of China. Oh. Wow. That's weird. They're still all divided and whatnot, but still. Kwantung Army, Rampant Banditry, Japan is what? Authoritarian Democracy? Alright. We ha Oh, the Russia's killing itself too. Oh, shit, help them out too. Kolchak, you look like you're angry, and you're tired, and you're probably both. And a transition to lower than cold, crippling debt, New Year's strike. Uh, Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. Oh, we can't send volunteers to you too. Bukharin, oh, look at this guy. Man, he needs some minoxidil on that hair. Maybe it's a finasteride. Uh, home of the revolutionaries, political turmoil, the new economic policy. Ooh, the NEP. So where does the poverty rate monthly change thing? It's ours captives. Ukrainian state, Skoropadsky, Skoropadsky, Skoropadsky. Unpopular government, of course. Low interest rate. Oh, the Crimean regional government. Interesting. Belarus, United. Oh, I love it. United Baltic Duchy. Oh, was fascism still here? Uh, we have military Vabaltung Litauen. Shackled Berlin, nice. Bex Personal Reich, very nice. Poland exists, somewhat. Polish Wehrmacht, that's kind of cool, actually. And we have Von Vestap, leader of the German Empire now. Uh, Master of Europe? Well, sort of ish. Yeah, I guess they. Eh, yeah. I guess they, don't, they, they do have Luxembourg. Oh, that's kind of cool. I love a Germany with Luxembourg and, of course, Alsace Lorraine. But, uh. Quite peculiar. And they also have what? Lost generation. Loss of a generation, yeah. Outstanding war debt. Very difficult. What is this? Austrian people's. Oh my god. Revolutionary socialism with Karl Renner. Do they have unique focus tree? Oh, that'd be so cool. I think only our nation has a unique focus tree, actually. Yeah, it's still, it's still a demo, so that's actually really cool. Kingdom of Italy. What's going on in the Italian sphere? Bulgaria is kind of large. Oh, this guy. El Duce. Massive deficit spending. Uh, Romania. Anatolian Federation, huh? What is wrong with your flag? Federation of Equals. What happened? National liberalism. Limit opposition. Bulgaria's looking kind of th really thick. Ferdinand the First, Greater Bulgaria. Uh, Serbs are looking well. Okay. Greece is not bad. Gorgios, popular Albania. Uh, you, you function democracy. Alfonso the Thirteenth. He's not in a coma. Hopefully, pink monarchist, huh? The king is loved. Oh. Well, well, the People's Republic might be uh, dying soon. AH. Negative 90%? Holy crap! <gasps> Carl! Austria's last chance. Oh, Carl. Carl, Carl, Carl. Where are the HQ? Who needed stability? Oh! The Czech Republic, too! Yeah, we're going to still wait. Um, right there. Headquarters, take on their statues. That will never happen here. Uh, <clears throat> community efficiency, as Reed stated. Before his unfortunate retirement, the federal bureaucracy is far too tangled. We've taken a few steps to rectify this already, but now the real work of rationalizing and codifying the various government agencies must begin. The various organizations must be consolidated and sorted by the specific roles. It's a gargantuan task, but it must be done. If for no other reason, then because it will become an election issue if we don't. A committee of our best and brightest bureaucrats will be put together to carry this out. Oh, Switzerland's purple. What the heck? Oh, hung Hungary. And Serbia immediately moved to take more territory. So, the Czech Republic is up by Jan Sramek. Czech's First Nation. Tensions with the Sudan land, of course. Uh, Hungary's led by Mindia Sorkowski. Red Dawn. Good campaign, good. Oh, Croatian state as well. Uh, Subacic. Subacic? Croatia's first state, nice. Growing leftist dissension, huh? <clears throat> hey, Southwest is doing not bad now. Southwest, Upper South, East Coast, small margin. Uh, East Coast might not be bad by small margin. Small, very small. Southwest would still be good to do just in case. Uh, 
West Coast. Well, let's do East Coast. Is anyone else going to pop out? Like another Poland? Oh! Oh, Hungary's killing itself with Transylvania, too. Look, like by some no per show person, but that's okay. Oh, wait, are they a puppet? Oh, they're protector. That's interesting. Actually, we're doing really well with this civil war now. We've really consolidated uh, uh, the territory here and whatnot. Yeah, which just helped kill them all off. There you go. Take the territory, too. Doing well with the navy. Oh, Montenegro actually appeared, too, huh? Oh, Bosnia. Oh. Partisan Council, our right to exist. No, you don't get any right to exist. To, to exist. Anyone else going to pop out? No? Okay, then. Let's go in at this point. It doesn't matter. But happy November, everybody. We're going to have, hopefully, some elections. So take down their statues? Sure. The Confederate States of America is a rebel nation. God bless them. Those who fought for our world traders and those who support our anti-American. Let us remove and destroy the reminders of this treason. Some argue that every single monument should be removed and melted down, but others suggest a more moderate approach of simply removing the statues of statesmen and generals. How far we go, of course, is an internal decision, but one that will be made one way or another. The grand finale. <clears throat> First thing that anyone would notice when entering the Madison Square Garden was the banners. There were three of them so massive that the fabric was held taut and held by its, its still by its own weight. Uh, they were bright red, uh, bright scarlet red, and stretched from the very top, ooh, uh, down, very top of the garden, down to the speaker's stage. On the left banner was the collective visage of Norman Thomas, staring out over the crowd through his circular spectacles. On the right was the face of Henry Wallace, sm uh, smiling warmly and confidently. And the center was a hand holding up a torch, and indicative of the Statue of Liberty herself, promising a brighter future for all. President Thomas smiles, emotion for his future vice president to take the stage and make the opening remarks, which the younger man did. My fellow Americans, my fellow socialists, I stand before you humbled and appreciative. You have shown great faith in me to support my elevation of the second highest office in the land, and I'll do everything in my power to bring our great country into a new age of prosperity and freedom. The crowd roared in approval, and the president clapped along with them. If the worst should ever come to pass, at least the party in the nation would be in safe hands in election day. Today is the last. Today is the day. The Americans everywhere are going down to the polling places, casting their votes for who will be the next president of the United States. Let's take a few days to collect and count the results, at which point a victory will be likely be declared. The anticipation. Oh boy. <clears throat> class action uh, uh, held. Okay, so class. Elections for class two elections have been included. The parties have seen the following changes. Congress got nothing. The Socialists got seven. The Republicans lost two. Democrats got two from the American First Party. The House, we lost two. Communist part. Uh, right, remember, six more socialists. The Republicans lost 28 because they probably voted for the Democrats. They got eight. And American First Party got 16. Nice. 195. That might be able to push us over. Uh, it didn't help our, our foothold in the Senate at all. Okay, so this is interesting. Democrat Party. So we got seven more, which is great. Uh, in New, New Jersey, they lost it to us, which is good. Uh, the Democrat Party lost it there. So let's just part defend their seat. The Democrat Party lost seat. Defended their seat. Defended, defended, defended. Three Republicans in the Great Plains got it. Nice. Or they lost, you know, they got they, they got the lost. Uh, elections for the presidency have concluded. 323 for votes for the Socialists, 236 for the Republicans, and 20 for the AFP. New Jersey voted Socialists. Is there a map? Oh my god, if there's a map we could see, like this election results, kind of like what TNO does now, that'd be a freaking amazing But You know, I know there's... What the heck? <laughs> oh my god. That, that... It's so meme -y, which takes away from its, like, significance of playing, being serious in Hoi 4, but still a game, so I love it. It's funny. It's just funny. It's, I love it. It's awesome. That's, that's really cool. All right, so now, now that we did that, actually, did this change? I don't think it's changed managing the party at all. Did it now? Showing signs of division. We're still very high, so high overall. Um, let's save just in case. And now, maybe at the end of the, near near the end of this episode or video, we can actually pass some god dang stuff. So we should be able to just work with the Republicans, and we should be good. Yeah, the guys are assassinated. Oh, look at that. Thomas wins again. Oh, Ben, but that was good ahead. The Kaiser's dead, long live the Kaiser. President Thomas reelected. The delight of some, the horrors of others, and the surprise of many. Norman Thomas, the incumbent Socialist Party candidate, has won the 1936 presidential election and is due to be sworn in on March 4th, having defeated the upstart uh, populist Lindbergh, the conservative lister, and the liberal Roosevelt. It's now clear that socialism is at least practiced by the Socialist Party of America as now the dominant force in American politics. The Thomas administration still faces many challenges, but it's clear that they have the public's full confidence behind them. Our democracy at work. Um, so. Immediately move it. So we need a couple more guys here. If we work with the Democrats, so 37 supporting it there. Um, oh, I just don't know how many they have. I don't want to spend too much political power. How about Democrats? Okay, so I'll put it at 50. Okay, so we'll be good. If we do this now, after being approved by the House, a bill must make, also make it through the Senate. Here, the road challenge it lies in voting the eternal filibuster, which is claiming the lives of countless pieces of legislation. Well, if facts passes, silently yet impatiently waiting for the tallying votes of. Uh, and the Senate to be finished. John Davison, 
Rockefeller Jr. was mere inches from a typewriter with his compatriots huddled around him in the scenic guest house. How much are you willing to bet against Shaft more than your lady friend back in Vegas? Chuckled the British magnate, who had made a fortune mining coal in Linden, Linton, Indiana. Huh. Settle down, lads. I may have bought out many of our senior Republicans and Democrats, but those socialists may yet pull a moose out from their sleeves if we aren't lucky. And with that, the whole room went into an uproar, practically laughing their heads off at the sly stab of their mortal foes. And then the typewriter began to print its ink. All of a sudden, Rockefeller Jr. leaped from the seat to view the results of the amendment. How far did they knock out of the park? said one of the men in the room. Something was very clearly awry. Falling back into his chair, Jr. lit a dim light with his pocket lighter. Well, it would appear that they were able to get a few cross benchers, mumbled the now deflated spirit, with a large Cuban cigar, taking a big pop before lighting the telegraph's results with the tip of the cigar. And so the common writer rejoiced. If that's the case, you know what? We've I struggled with that with this throughout this entire episode. We're gonna save again and pass another piece of legislation. The Social Security Act. It's gonna hurt political power, but that's okay. Um, I guess we got it. We could negotiate with the communists. Uh, 264 out of 242 and 50. Alright, let's move it in. Social Security bill passes too. Look at that. Fast. You know, Glover opened the day's newspaper with the callous tired hands. A West Virginia entire his life had grown up steeped in the coal state's coal mining industry. As a young boy, he'd been a coal store, picking bits of rocks out of the stream of coal that was brought up from the mine on conveyor belts. When he got older, he'd gone down to the mines himself. <clears throat> As had many others, West Virginia coal miners had gotten caught up in the whirlwind of political radicalism. His brother had been in the Blair Mountain, and he himself was a proud redneck, a social organizer, and unionizer. He voted for Norman Thompson, 32, and intended to do so again for this pa and did so this past in this past year. What he really was excited for today was a social security bill. It'd be a godsend of folks like him who did hard labor for a living. They needed the money when they retired, the hard, unforgiven work which left their, often left the bodies broken. He knew too many people who relied on charity and church donations to survive in their old age. A monthly payment would be a godsend. <laughs> They searched through the paper's pages, feeling more and more dejected until finally found what he was looking for, a small article in the next to the last page by the voting on the bill, and it had succeeded. A wave of relief washed over Harold, and he leaned back in his chair, casting his eyes up at the ceiling as a grin spread across his face. Thank you, Lord, he leaned back to forward to continue reading the other short article, which was mostly about what so so Social Security would do. He felt immensely grateful to God, to Norman Thomas, and of course to the Socialist Party. Now, he wouldn't feel pain in his heart when he saw the, all these old men in church, bent double in ragged clothes, unable to support themselves. A new day was slowly dawning, and seemed bright for herself and the posterity. Nice. Socials look a little better themselves too. Nice, good. So we can close out of the election season. Well, you know what? Let's let's keep it open just because like I'm gonna forget about that later on. And we have a little bit of political power. I don't mind uh, maybe doing some more stuff here. It goes a little more influential. Uh, I like the Eastern Caucus and Western Caucus. Um, so there's not really much we can do there. So let's come over here then. And what do we want to do? Entrenchment. Oh, daily army speed gain. Yeah, I should have done this earlier. Vision attrition. That's not bad. Uh, it's more army XP. Why not? Air theorists, naval theorists, and physicists and whatnot. General Electric, not much here. Red flag. Oh, nice. Good job, Brazil. National Liberation Alliance. Um, I guess we'll go with, let's go with the Army Ordinance. We can trust the Army more than anybody else. Okay, so bare bones. Monthly poverty rate, but where is that? Okay, keep asking for that, but where is it? Oh, I declared war on Hungary. Yeah, no one likes Hungarians. Kiss the bottom, huh? Slavic progressivism. Belgium. We held. Oh, but at what cost? And Wilhelmina has nothing going on for her. Cool. Hopefully this goes bye-bye sometime soon. Community on efficiency. Global conflicts. Oh, Danubian. Oh, crap. Spread the right of self-determination. People of the Balkans have before, so so far, been so long, have been oppressed by the Austrian despots. Now they have finally risen up against their overlords, taking the fate uh, in their own hands. For the benefit of all peoples, we will support them. Sure, why not? Dance with them. Oh, can I support them at all? Obviously not these guys. Oh, get a support of these guys. Crap. Oops. Do you have an air base at all? No, you don't. Okay. Oh, I can still send guys here, though. Maybe. Are you threw in some plain gas. Plenty of new ships. Uh, there you go. Just train and living crap out of everything, pretty much. Um, can we actually send more volunteers? Doesn't really look... Oh! Do we have one there? No. Cool. I like getting involved. Election season ends. The ballot's been cast, and the winners celebrate. And the losers sulk and scheme, and their plan's ready for next time. <clears throat> 
Election season has come to a close, and as the campaigns wind down and people return to the regular rhythms of life, Americans everywhere congratulate themselves on doing their part to maintain the world's greatest republic. Until next time. Cool. Wait for them to show up. And our artillery erased their legacy. Confederacy marks the lowest point of American experiment. A filthy bastard of a nation born from exploitation, bondage, and racism. Social spiral of racist legacy, stamping out the last embers of the Confederacy that still smolder in the South. Hey, here we are. Nice, we're doing some good work here now. I we need more chaos ourselves. Um, for now, since we're here, we're going to go high on the air, we're going to go low on there, and medium for the, everyone else. Anything else here? We have 11. Dance with them? I'd like to do more reforms or not, but... <clears throat> what do we say we want the Bosnian front to do well? Uh, it doesn't even matter since we like escalated things already, but I don't know. Craig, come back. And you will be led now by you. And you will go where? Here? Yeah. Go, 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 go. Hey, Checkmate Davisites. As you asked, take down the Confederate statues. Oh, oh, do we have our own awards? That's cool. It's comes out and you not the Emerald Isle. Oh. Huh. It'll never happen here. The U.S. of A.S. is the greatest nation ever exists. We are the shining city on a hill. A beacon of progress in humanity. Fascism, slavery, and exploitation shall never find a home here. We will make sure of it. Lee marches north. <laughs> Ever watched in dismay as the statue was lifted up off the pedestal, Shane's growing tired as the crane lifted it up in the air, slowly swung across the grassy park and set it down on the bed of a National, uh, National Guard truck. He joined the crowd in shouting at these assembled soldiers, National Guardsmen from the north, federalized, and sent south to protect Army engineers as he removed the obvious symbols of the Confederacy from the public lands across Dixie. It's unconstitutional, you can't do this. He pushed his way through the crowd, shouldering jeering men and women outside to get to the front where he was held back by the National Guardsmen. Hey, Yankee, he yelled at an engineer observing the truck who turned to face him curiously. Put it back, you can't do this. I'm Yankee, I'm from Minnesota, and why not? The uniformed man grinned amusedly. This is all like a big joke. We did it before. Every certain. Well, you know what? We got your battle flag. A Minnesota unit captured at Gettysburg. Finders keepers, you know. Your state keeps trying to get it back, and some fellow tried to sue it for when the, around the turn of the century. We ain't ever given it back. Don't worry, we ain't going to keep the statue. Don't know what's going to be done with it, but hey, that's not really my business. We're willing to keep that pedestal, though. You know what you like with it. Just don't put any more traitors on it. What if we came up to your state and took down your statues? How would you feel? Everett yelled. Well, we don't really make a habit and put up statues of traitors who try to destroy the Union. But hey, maybe if you elect the right guy, it'll be your turn to give it a shot. Just remember how it went the last time you fellows tried to dictate terms of the North. He walked away to the supervisor securing the statue, leaving Everett spluttering fiercely. So what did he do with the pedestal? Can the National Guard really do that? I guess maybe the governor wants to, too, but still then. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm just the guy playing Hoyt War. Can the federal government do that? Compared to, is that a state statue? Is that a federal statue? Then again, this is all history. Don't ask me. I'm just here to play a game. Uh, but probably get some better tanks. We do have some light tanks. Oh, these are militia. Vice of God. Can we actually win there? How are we doing? Damage? They're not really attacking us in reserve. In return. There you go. Ah. So Mexico is having a bit of a problem. They got Jesus and the defense of the Lord. And they have uh, laborious dominance. The Mexican United Front. Radical Christianity. Or Christians. Cool. Now Mexico way. The United Me Mexican states have long been renowned for their incredible instability over the course of the last century. And has had a tough go of it recently. The traditionally Catholic conservative population of the Southern Republic has been under the boot of radical authoritarian left-wing beliefs. That in all aspects should have been visited out after the favor that was the Russian Civil War. We stand ever vigilant regards with... And we'll watch the growing responsibility with great interest. Mexico plays. Only someone tried to settle the dust in the border area. Honestly, like, let's just keep it middle. Thank you. Keep it in the middle. Okay, so. Um, the situation in Mexico has evolved in an open violence. Catholic antipathy towards the secular constitution of Mexico established in 1917 has been slowly building for years and has been previously suggested by the Department of War that the situation will eventually spill over into the open violence, which, it, of course, it now has. Large sections of central Mexico have rebelled under the leadership of Enrique Gorostita, who the department regretfully cannot find information about, but it would be safe to assume that he desires the presidency of Mexico and to rewrite the Mexican constitution to make Catholicism the state religion. 
The central government is currently being led by Plutarco Elias Calles, leader of the Labourist Party, which the current administration will favor. As they're mostly socialists and unionists, serving as the political arm of the Regional Confederation of the Mexican Workers, currently the most powerful union in Mexico, send volunteers. Well, I don't want to lose manpower, I'd rather just do it myself. Send heavy equipment. Send trucks. Send military observers. Um... I guess we're going to get involved down Mexico way. Maintain neutrality, we could do that, and then negotiate peace. But what's the point of that? Getting involved. Our nation has held long-standing beliefs of isolationism for many generations, having aborted the Great War 20 years ago and faced with no major conflicts since that of the Spanish-American War. The American public has little interest in getting involved in wars across the world, but in a war on our doorstep, that might just be something we can swing at the public. A war to stop the menace of authoritarianism from crossing our southern border, in fact, they're coming right for us. What are we doing here? Are we doing okay? Uh, can you actually help them out? Maybe? Maybe not? 18 combo with? Yes. Um, Mexico ablaze. We should do something. It's a humanitarian crisis. We should do nothing. We're past this after all. Y'all? Yeah, nah. Yeah. Permit volunteers. Ooh. Although the president cannot at this moment risk direct intervention in the conflict raging within the borders of our southern neighbor, it would be fundamentally American to restrict the freedom of our citizens to fight for causes that they believe in. Effective immediately, a statement will be put out by the President and the Congress that the Americans are permitted to travel south with their own armaments to support the cause of freedom and democracy in Mexico. If it wasn't for the morally superior Yankees, the world would certainly be a darker place. With the growing instability of Mexico, the embattled American companies and working men being threatened at gunpoint and relinquished capital to various savage partisan groups, we must send our men in arms to defend the stability of the legitimate Mexican government from the cronies that seek to undermine our interests and the lives of millions of civilians caught in the crossfire. National Spirit will remove out of the course, uh, conclusion. Cool, but I think we're going to end it there. It's a good old first episode, and we're really just building ourselves up and seeing what this demo is all like. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and please let me know if you know where to find the rate of poverty change. Please let me know in the comments below, because that'd be great to do. Because I, I want to make sure the poverty gets a little better. So thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.